All right, so now that we looked at mechanical energy, we need to go back and refocus on this other concept here, energy conversions, okay? Now, all energy has to be converted from one form to another in order to be used, usually. Okay, and when it does, it has to follow what we call the law of conservation of energy. So here's this word again, conservation. We've learned it several times this year. Here it is once again. So the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. One of the most basic examples of energy conversion is the transformation between kinetic and potential energy. So a pendulum is an object here that continuously transfers energy from kinetic to potential and back and forth. As you see here, um, the pendulum, when it has its greatest potential, uh, energy when the when it's let's say 100% GPE here uh, at that same time it is at zero percent kinetic energy right and vice versa over here as well now down here it's the opposite at this point at the bottom here right it has the highest kinetic energy so it would be a hundred percent kinetic energy and zero percent potential okay now, as a uh, conservation of energy states during this process some energy is going to be lost due to other circumstances such as friction okay so whatever you start with here right uh, once it comes back it makes one full cycle, uh, it's not going to have the same amount of energy. It's going to be lost. I'm going to post a couple of videos for you on the Schoology page that will have, uh, have you to watch. And these are really good demonstrations to uh, elaborate on these concepts more. So we get into the concept of uh, energy conversions. Uh, we studied a little bit about <clears throat> the different forms of energy, the six different forms. And in order to use them for our purposes, um, we, we have to convert them. All right, so we're going to walk through uh, an energy conversion example here uh, to demonstrate that. So first of all, I'm using an iPad here to make this video. All right, where did the electricity to use this? Uh, iPad come from? Well, first of all, it started at the sun. Okay, so in the sun, the sun is a star, so it is taking um, basically nuclear energy, right? It's the energy combining of the uh, hydrogen atoms into helium, right? When those are fused together, this is an example of nuclear fusion, uh, and that is being converted into. Uh, electromagnetic radiation, all different forms. Now, if we want to get into some technicalities, you know, we could uh, take that a couple steps further and talk about how the energy is getting together to make the star, but that's a whole different day. All right, so that's the first step. The second step is this electromagnetic radiation makes its way to planet Earth in the form of uh, visible light, and these ancient plants, uh, trees, ferns, these sorts of things, take this uh, electromagnetic radiation, convert it into um, chemical energy through the process of photosynthesis, okay? So photosynthesis is actually an energy conversion process. So the third step is, over many, you know, thousands of millions of years, that the plant material gets turned into coal. So that chemical energy get, continues to be formed. All right, so we dig the coal out of the ground and take it to a power plant where it is burned. All right, and that chemical energy is then turned into thermal energy. 
in the form of heat. Okay, uh, now the heat then, step four, is going to heat up the water uh, inside of the generator. I'm going to post a video uh, also about generators and how those work in this process to give you more detail. But nonetheless, just for right now, the steam from the elect, uh, from the hot water, right, goes into the generator and spins the turbine blades, those big huge fan blades. So this uh, this thermal energy is now turning into motion, which is mechanical energy. And the mechanical energy of the spinning of the turbine, right, spins the magnet inside the electric, I mean the coil of copper wires, right, and inside that magnetic field you have electricity that is produced. Okay, <clears throat> so that electricity is then shipped to your house, we talked about that earlier, right, and that electrical energy is now turned into uh, chemical energy in the form of the lithium-ion battery inside of the uh, iPad. Okay, so the electricity is stored chemically again, right? And then, once you open up your iPad, the iPad converts <clears throat> the chemical energy inside the battery into electromagnetic radiation. Okay, I'm going to post a couple of... Uh, uh, assignments here related to these energy conversions here shortly. All right, we're going to go over a couple um, very important concepts and terms here that you need to know in order to do some other stuff we're about to be doing soon. Uh, this this part should be a little bit of a review because we learned about it earlier in the year, but the concept of thermal energy uh, and how that pertains to kinetic theory. Remember, thermal energy is the energy of, that's given off through all the total particle sum uh, of a substance. Remember, all particles are moving around uh, in a constant state of motion, right? Uh, they are uh, in, in this constant state of, of moving unless it, they're at absolute zero, right? Uh, and when they do move, they give off energy, right? And this energy is what we call thermal energy. So that leads us to the concept of heat, all right? So heat is nothing more than the transfer of thermal energy from one object to another, okay? And some of the basic concepts of, of heat state that heat always flows from a warmer to a cooler. So when you touch an object and it feels cold, right? It feels cold to you because the heat from your hand, all right, is warmer than that object and the heat is transferring from you to the cooler object and how our brain interprets that as is feeling cold okay so vice versa if you're touching something that's warm right that that w warmer object is then transferring energy to you so that our brain interprets that as heat now temperature uh, by definition, is the measurement of the average kinetic energy of particles and matter. Okay? So, that's a really important concept and a really important distinction. Because in a substance, let's say you're a coffee, right? You just go to Sierra Coffee, you get you a nice hot latte uh, what's happening chemically is some of the particles inside the latte are moving faster than others okay and so temperature is nothing more than the average of all the particles some are moving fast some are moving slow slower okay uh, some of them may actually be individually have enough energy to be considered to be boiling but some of them not because remember, certain particles warm up faster than others, chemically speaking. But nonetheless, temperature is the average of all of these particles moving around. Okay? Keyword there is average. 
So temperature scales, as we already talked about a little bit earlier, we have three main scales that we use here commonly. Um, most of the, the world uses Celsius, right? This is the SI unit for temperature. No, it's not. That one is. Uh, Kelvin. Remember, Kelvin's on the scale of absolute zero, right? Uh, however, uh, in some places in the world, like the United States and only a few other places, uh, use the, the scale of Fahrenheit, okay? And here's a good little picture here that shows both scales together. Uh, zero and one doesn't equal zero in the other, okay? And so thermal energy, uh, continuation here. Uh, this is a concept that we reviewed earlier in the year, so I'm just going to skim over a little bit. So remember, thermal energy depends on mass, okay? The more mass you have, the more thermal energy. Remember why that is, is because uh, the more particles you have, the more energy that you have. Because remember, thermal energy is all of the particles that are moving around, okay? So obviously if you have more particles, you have more thermal energy, okay? Thermal energy also depends on temperature. The higher the temperature, the more thermal energy. Because, remember, temperature is the average. So if your average is high, that means that you're going to have more particles that are going to have more thermal energy, by definition. And lastly, thermal energy is what dictates the five phases or states of matter and how they change from one to the other. There has to be... Um, some thermal energy that is lost or some thermal energy that's gained, okay? So for instance, over here, uh, to go from a solid to a gas, right? So when you're going up, right, what has to happen? Sublimation occurs, right? When you're going from one from solid state to the gas, that means thermal energy has to go into these particles in order for it to change states, okay? And that should be a review. One of the most practical uh, consequences of thermal energy is a concept called thermal expansion. For those of you who want to be an engineer, uh, material scientist, these sorts of things, you have to have a really good understanding of this concept because it's really important. All right, this picture here You've probably seen one of these if you passed over a bridge, but these are what we call thermal expansion plates. Uh, so basically what happens is uh, when the temperature increases, right, uh, outside, the thermal energy of this material here that this bridge is made of is going to increase in volume, okay? And once it increases in volume, the little individual particles are going to start pushing further and further apart from each other, and the consequence is that material is going to expand, all right? And so uh, engineers for making bridges and buildings and whatnot, places that are very high temperatures uh, or t very extreme temperature changes, uh, have to systematically put structures inside that building or the bridge that allow for thermal expansion to take place in a controlled setting. All right? These are exactly what these are. Um, these thermal expansion plates are crucial to maintaining structural integrity of a bridge or a building. Okay, So, I'm going to post a, a video for you guys to watch about that here pretty soon too. Uh, oh, I almost went for almost forgot. You've probably seen these on the sidewalks too. If you've ever been to a place that has, you know, sidewalks. Ha ha ha. Sorry. Uh, you have these little lines that are systematically placed in the sidewalk. And those are thermal expansion um, little areas. Okay. Uh, so potholes and things of that nature. You know, if you live in a place where potholes are common, uh, these the potholes are the, one of the main reasons, um, excuse me, thermal expansion is one of the main reasons potholes exist, right? Because in the summertime, when the temperature gets hot, the concrete or asphalt expands, 
uh, and cracks. And in the winter time, when uh, it snows or ice freezes over, right, water gets into these areas. And a uh, funny thing happens too when water freezes, it expands and the holes get bigger. 